Morning, Scribe. Good morning, Patty. How the devil are you? Brilliant as always. <laughs> what have you got for me today? Oh, since someone was writing all the time and didn't have time for YouTube videos, mm -hmm. um, I have two topics. Ooh. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, you can choose what to do first. I got um, Kitty Girls. Right, which is obviously quite relevant with the the books, yes? Yep, that's how I came up with the topic, to be honest. Um, okay. And the other one is um, Submission as a Gift. What's as a, your... <laughs> as a gift? Yes. You read mm. it all the time on Twitter, you know, I follow a few Subby Girls and... It just appears again and again, so... I thought I'd ask you what you think about that. Okay, well, we'll do that one. We'll do that one second, shall we? Because I have... I have thoughts on that, Yeah, Patty. I heard the growl. <laughs> so, um, we shall see what we shall see on that one. So... Let's pick the, 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 the easier subject, mm -hmm. shall we say, of kitty girls. Yes, they're so cute. They are cute. And I must admit, you know, I will confess that it is one of my favourite little kinky fetishes. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is something very cute and cuddly and um, very soft about a kitty girl. Um, and it, it adds... I don't know, it's a, it's a little something mm -hmm. to the to ADS relationship if it is it is based around the, the antics of a kitty girl and she is treated as a, a cute pet. Um, so I must admit it, it is a favourite, and obviously with the the current books out, with Kitty One has proved very very popular. And, um, Kitty 2 is due out very soon. Um, it has been brought into the consciousness um, of a few people recently. and um, Something that I've had lots of comments on Twitter, uh, both privately and public, that you know, it is a subject that has, has caught their imagination. Mm -hmm. And of course it is catered for within the lifestyle. There are specialist places, specialist websites, um, in a lot of the lifestyle chat rooms and things like that, uh, you know, there is um, a space for kitty girls. Um, so if somebody looks into it quite seriously, then they can very, very quickly transform themselves into a pretty kitty. Um, it depends on just how far they want to take that form of role play. Hmm. Um, um, is it a type of role play where it's mostly the girls being where the kitties, or are there also male versions? There are male versions. Um, without giving spoilers away, um, I think that subject is touched on in Kitty too. Oh. Um, there are tomcats out there mm. that serve a mistress. Um, or I'll have ask. to Google that. Yes, you will. Um, but I bet they don't look as cute as the girls. I have only ever personally seen one. Mm -hmm. One guy. Um, and he was a pet of a mistress who, I, I do believe they lived in, uh, I think it was Liverpool, mm -hmm. um, UK based. I met them at a... Um, an event, the London Fetish Fair, mm. going back a long time now, probably at least 10 years. Um, and he was her pet, and as a Tom, um, obviously he catered for her needs mm. as much as a kitty girl caters for her owner's needs. Um, and he'd embraced the role fully. He had the outfit and... Um, I was about to ask, did he have the cute kitty ears and tail? And he did, yes he know. did. 
Um, and he was a good-looking guy. He was. Um, it suited him very well. I mean, it, I have not difficulty relating to submissive men. It's I cannot get into their mindset. Mm. Obviously, it's not the way I am. Um, but in his place, you know, the role he, that she had created for him, he fitted him very well. It suited him very well. I think he was a good-looking guy, and he had the, the complete outfit on. Um, obviously, he was more masculine than, you know, a kitty girl's outfit. Um, but if I remember rightly, there were probably about four or five kitties there. Um, I think they had a group photo taken, um, which is, but outside, because obviously they, they frown on cameras. Um, I think it was outside in the drinking, smoking area. Uh, and it was quite a good, cute photo. Um, but his mistress was very pleased with him. Um, and they had been together around about 18 months, I think it was, two years at the time. So it was a long-term thing. Um, I have only personally been um, blessed with a kitty girl for a short period of time. Um, so, once again, a while ago. Um, was it something she, she wanted to try out or something you said you want to see her in? It was one of those situations that was osmosis, Patty. Mm. It kind of um, diversified. Mm. Um, the nature of the girl was um, she was a little cute thing. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a case of during the discussion, you know, during the process of the relationship, it was a subject that crossed our paths, and obviously I knew of it. Um, and it came up in a conversation, and it was a, a ooh, tell me more. <laughs> so I gave her a little bit of reading to do, um, pointed out some relevant places around, go and take a look, you know, see, see what these people say about it. Mm. Um, and then we'll talk more if it was something of interest. Um, and it was. Um, so she started the transformation. Um, unfortunately, circumstances meant that we couldn't stay together for um, much longer after that. Um, real life got in the way, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and I have no idea whether she carried on as a kitty girl, whether she carried on embracing it and, mm -hmm. or not. But um, wherever she is, I wish her luck. Um, so I have not had the full experience, shall we say, of owning, you know, a, a pretty kitty girl. Mm. Um, but never say never, Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. never. Uh, who knows what the future has in store for us? Um, but it is something. It, it is. It is a softer side of DS. It is. You know, there is, um, it is less reliant on um, physical discipline, unless, of course, that is the dynamic that is involved. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly it's a, it's a cuter, cuddly um, form of relationship because kitties, by their very nature, they need lots of fuss and attention and um, lots of strokes and, you know, lots of cuddles. It's... Um, so, like a baby girl, but with ears and a bit more wild. Yes, yes. Okay. Obviously, there's there's a, there's a, that naughty element, mm. um, but most kitty girls have. There's a little bit of fire there, isn't there? There's a little spark and mm. that little edge of naughtiness. But then, you know, in honest, you know, in honesty, Patty, most girls have that anyway. There's always an edge. Um, you're all bad girls if the mood takes you. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, but yes, it does have that element, and obviously, mm -hmm. if she embraces the role, um, and if she, you know, for the period of time that you are together, she becomes a kitty girl, and then it, it brings a whole new dynamic to a relationship, um, and you know, if she's a... Um, a public-minded girl, she likes, you know, likes to attend places and stuff. Then she gets to preen and 
prance as a, a little kitty girl out in public. So um, it's one of those roles that you can take to whatever level the relationship needs, whatever you know, whatever suits you both. Um, it may just be a plaything. It may be restricted to the bedroom. It may be restricted to short periods of time where she's feeling in a feline mood. Um, so for an evening, you know, the kitty girl comes out. Mm. Um, there are no rules, as I, I've said countless times, Patty. There are no rules to any form of relationship, DS, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is whatever is pertinent to the relationship you are in. You make your own rules and nobody else should judge, so it is not wrong for it to drift in and out. It is just, it adds a, another um, dimension to a relationship. Mm -hmm. If it is something that is taken on full-time and she is a kitty, she becomes a full-time owned kitty, then that's great. If it's like I said, but if it's something that just drifts in it every now and again when she's in a, a naughty mood, a cheeky mood, a, a playful mood, um, there's nothing wrong with that either. Mm. Um, obviously, the, the the dominant is the driving force, and um, provided they enjoy it and you know they embrace it as well, then a lot of fun can be had. Mm. Uh, uh, I think. Kitty girls are fascinating because it's it seems to be a favorite not only in in the BDSM world but I don't know do you watch anime sometimes or hentai probably not the Japanese um, I, I have seen them in the past I've mm, seen okay. an awful lot they appear in um, I see a lot across my timeline on Twitter mm. all, but you know you, you get a lot of anime and role play. Mm -hmm. um, tweets and posts coming across, and I do know that the you know the Japanese have embraced kitty girls, yeah. and there are whole series of anime films and yeah. uh, hentai and films. So cute. They are very cute. They are very cute. Anime and girls are cute by nature, but as kitties, oh. it's just you know. I know, but it's a stylized. Yes, of course. Isn't it? Um, I mean, there are, you know, th there are girls that will naturally, because of the way that they're built, the way of their nature, um, their whole demeanour, it will lend itself to being a kitty mm -hmm. far more readily than others. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, others cannot enjoy that role, um, but some are naturals. Mm -hmm. um, and... I think if, if they have that element in them and they're within a DS relationship that is open, to, you know, is open to exploration, is open to broadening the concept of, uh, you know, the sexuality between the two of them, mm -hmm. then nine times out of ten there will be a gravitation towards that role, to the, either a baby girl, softer role, um, or a kitty girl. Um, I have met several over the years that are just complete naturals. They are made to be a kitty girl. Everything about them is, you know, is soft and feline, and mm -hmm. um, they could do it without even thinking about it. Others, obviously, it would be a mind shift. Mm -hmm. um, it would be taking on more of a role rather than something that is is natural. But it doesn't make you know it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong. Um, once again, if it's a period of time, you know, a, a point of pleasure, it doesn't matter. All role play um, has a purpose, regardless of what it is, regardless of the dynamic that it's based around. If it's enjoyable for the the couple, then it can fit in in any context, can't it? Mm. So. It's it's one of those things that is certainly a fun subject, and it should be fun. All of it should be fun, Patty. Um, and it's got a slinky side, it's got a naughty side, it's mm. got a cute side, it's got the cuddly side. So it does have an awful lot going for it. Um, and as it has developed over the years, there are more and more... Um, sites out there that will cater for it to just add a little touch of realism. Uh, yeah, and the cute tales. 
Mm. I mean, I, I've, as I mentioned in Kitty One, those that have read it, you know, her eyes were a little bit wide when she realised it ended in a butt plug. But then, you know, it's it's a tale, mm. so it needs to go in the right place, and um, it also gives an extra sensory perception, doesn't it, of, um, of being a kitty, because they feel the tale, um, rather than it being sewn on to a costume. Um, so, I think that has a, a, a relevance to all of it. Um, and if it's something new for her, then it's a case of bite the bottom lip and be a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and see where it goes, um, but I think it's you know it's one of those things. It, it makes the whole transformation, doesn't it? it mm -hmm. As in Kitty One, it's becoming something else. It's taking on the persona of the Kitty that's you know the inner Kitty, mm -hmm. and those those little pieces of clothing, of costume. Of, you know, the the gloves, the paws, mm. the, the ears, the whiskers, the tail, the, you know, the outfits, what she wears as a kitty girl. Mm. Um, it completes the transformation, doesn't it? it? It alters the mindset and puts her in the place where she wishes to be. Mm. So I, they're all important. They're all important little things. Um, so... If you're, you know, ladies, if you're listening, if, if it's one of those things that you look at, there are lots of places for you to explore. Um, you can search through the alternative sites, and there are lots of places that cater for it, and you will see what is available. Um, if you go into places like Fat Life, um, there are discussion groups for kitty girls, there are owners groups, there are kitty groups, there are all sorts of things that you can find. And you can expand your knowledge and get a little insight before you go through the process of thinking yes you know I could see me in that role then you have to find a suitable owner hmm. somebody who embraces the, you know, what it is you wish to be um, as fully as you do so take your time like everything else look into these things um, and if you do and you approach it in the right way it can be an awful lot of fun and of course, there's other type of pet play. Of course, so yes. There everyone is. should find something. Yes. That's fitting. But kitties it, it are the cutest. Yes, I happen to like kitties. I mean, I know there are, you know, there are. Um, there's pony play. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's most forms of um, pet play, animal play out there. Um, pony play is a completely different subject mm -hmm. and is very intricate and has a lot of discipline involved. Mm. Um, it's not something I've looked into. I've seen it, I've watched it, uh, I've seen demonstrations, I have met several pony girls um, at various events, but it's not something I have a great deal of knowledge of. It. I would have to look into it. But kitty girls, mm, for me, they have a place. <laughs> Hence, Have you writing the book. Yes, the place is on a cushion next to your desk. Yes, <laughs> curled on a, on a nice cushion next to the desk, uh, or or of course, purring quietly, sat in my lap. Uh, That's a yeah, good place. I thought so. As long as it's as long as I still type and work, then they can curl up quietly. <laughs> <laughs> So those of you that haven't caught up on the Kitty books, Kitty 1's out there, Kitty 2 will be out there very soon. Shows a little change in her, she gets a little bit naughtier, a typical naughty kitty, um, when she slips the leash, but um, she soon gets brought back into line, but I won't say any more. <laughs> we will have to wait and see. Yes, you will. It'll be with you very soon, Patty. Oh, so. Good. Because I like the first one. Good. I am glad. I am glad. It has been, it has proven popular. Hmm. Um, so, lots of comments, lots of positive feedback. Um, and I think it's, you know, like, as I said earlier, it's, it's given readers a different dimension, uh, you know, you know, a different perception of what can be construed as a DS relationship. Hmm. 
So, um, and I'm pleased about that because, if nothing else, our role, Patty, is to expand people's knowledge base um, and to show them and you know explain to them that it's not all about whips and chains. It's not all about pain and pleasure. Yes, it's not and it can be cuddly and cute. Yes. If she's a bad kitty, then she might get a little spank on the hind quarters, but... Um, a little so pull on the tail. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It's a little jiggle of the tail that normally gets somebody's mm. attention. Mm. <laughs> so there we go. Mm. Now we have this other... <laughs> oh, I love how suddenly your, your voice becomes all dark and... Mm. So, dear scribe, let's talk about submission as a gift. Submission as a gift. First of all, um, the point I would like to make is the perception of submission as a gift and the insistence that it is a gift that has to be earned is wrong. Hmm. However, I will concede, it is a gift. But that gift is a two-way thing. The gift of submission is counted and added to by the gift of domination. Hmm. So therefore, I see it as an exchange, not a gift. Hmm. It is not a standalone gift. It is an exchange. A girl does give her submission to the one that gives his domination, that happens to gel with, with her requirements, her needs, her desires, mm -hmm. and she obviously fulfills his. So once that has been established that they are compatible, then it is an exchange he gives her his domination. He gives her the focus of her submission. And she obviously feeds his need to have one that submits. So seeing it as a gift that must be earned, yes, it must, everything, submission should be earned as it's not a right. Let me make that point very clear. It is not a right for somebody who says they are dominant to automatically expect, you know, these these guys that appear on places and, you know, kneel girl and, you know, as their first line, mm -hmm. kneel and submit, I am a master. They need a slap. I'm sorry. They need a slap. Um, and ladies, if anybody approaches you in that way, give them a slap and tell them scribe said so. <laughs> um, because that is wrong. Mm -hmm. So it is earned. But then submission, the domination from the dominant is earned. The girl must be as worthy of his dominance as he is of her submission. Mm -hmm. So it is an exchange. Please see it that way, people. It's, um, ladies, if you know, to, to constantly heart and say, my submission is a gift and it must be earned. Yes, I agree with that. But don't hang it out there as though it is, you know, it is something that should be that it is almost like taking the element of control. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase where they call it topping from the bottom, which, you know, which is basically a very, very bossy submissive who she only submits on her terms and they've got to be, you know, there's a list, provided you fulfill that, yeah, okay, I'll be your submissive. Um, yeah, it's wrong, ladies, that's wrong. Um, those things are open to negotiation. And if you meet somebody that you are compatible with, who is a true dominant, then these things are discussed between you. And there is a, a, an amalgamation of ideas. There is a blending and a bonding and a, um, a process you go through where the, the feelings and emotions and the requirements and the desires, they start to gel. And then you know that yes, you can take it forward to the next step. Um, but until that happens, then you're both at the point of 
earning the other person's trust as much as anything else. Mm -hmm. It's a two-way thing. It is, you know, I keep saying it, it's not a gift that somebody has to earn. You both have to exchange the, you know, the processes and the beings that you are. A submissive girl and a dominant man or vice versa, whichever dynamic it is, you know, um, I'll just use a male-female scenario because that is one I know. Mm. Um, so I don't, I don't see it as um, a gift, as a standalone thing. I don't see it that it's it's almost like packaging something up in a parcel and wrapping it in ribbons and saying, you know, when you're good enough, you can pick my parcel up. Um, we're all good enough. Everybody's good enough. Oh, oh my word. Oh, no. Now, that was the one phone that I didn't mute. Can we just pause there, Patty, yes, while I see who this should speak? Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a sales call, Patty. No. Somebody tried to sell me. I've qualified for something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are we still paused? Uh, no, I just clicked. So, we are back. Okay. So we're back on. My apologies, people. That's um, that's my office phone. So it's the only one I haven't muted purely because the only people that should call that are people that need to talk to me. Um, however, that was not important. So it is gone. So yes, let's get back to our subject. Why we've been rudely interrupted by some Herberts trying to tell me that I claim PPI, um, which I already know. So yes, the the holding it up there as the Holy Grail, mm. um, which is a common thing. But yes, ladies, it is. A, I will concede it is a gift, but you must also, you know, you mustn't make it a, a requirement. Um, it is an exchange. Um, I can understand where the um, prevalence of this has come from recently because with the advent of the literary world embracing certain ideas of DS mm -hmm. um, with the current plethora of you know, the erotic novels, which I am part of, of course. Um, the expansion of the DS concept. Mm -hmm. There have been more and more people drawn into the life because it is attractive. It has an element that they, they wish to explore. But it has also brought the undesirable, shall we say. Mm -hmm. Those who are looking to make a quick killing. Um, for want of a better expression, killing is... No, we don't, we don't talk about killing. Um, I don't think we'll ever touch snuff, Patty. No. I don't think it's a subject we'll ever go down. Um. <laughs> I've seen that one movie, what was it called? Eight millimeters? What's all about? Ah, oh, isn't important. But that was enough no. for me. I don't need Yes. That no, no, no. no. I've looked into the subject in the past. I was given many moons ago somebody asked me to write a snuff story mm. and um, I was once approached in my role as a pro dom many moons ago to be part of a snuff scenario uh, what? Needless, needless to say I didn't become involved it, it was I basically inform them to take their fantasy elsewhere because it is nothing that I would ever be interested in. But it goes to show that it is out there. Mm. Um, and they were willing to pay quite handsomely. Mm. But, no thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's not get distracted it's by the darker it's... elements. Uh, we've got enough shadows as it is, we don't need to go down that road. <laughs> So, submission as a gift. In a nutshell, in my opinion, that's all I can give, Patty. In my opinion. Mm. Um, it is a gift, in as much that domination is a gift. 
Um, so therefore it is, it is a two-way exchange. It is not a holy grail that somebody is expected to earn. Mm. Uh, as, you know, before you go any further, the whole purpose and the whole premise behind a DS relationship is discussion, it is talking, it is knowledge, it is finding out about the other person. To give somebody a almost an ultimatum, a requirement of fulfilling certain terms and conditions before they are considered worthy mm. is making a mockery of it, in my opinion. Because the most, on the surface, you, we've all had instances in the past, Patty, anybody who's listening to this, I have, I'm sure you have, where on first encounter with a person you haven't liked them. Mm -hmm. There has been something about them that has either butchered, you know, has raised hackles, it has, there's just been something yeah. that you don't like. However, over a period of time, when you have got to know them, you have got, you know, you talk, you discuss, you, you know, these things, the process of learning takes place, they actually become somebody that you become very close to mm. in various ways, either friendship or you, as a lover, uh, as whatever, but you actually get close to them because you have learned, you have taken the time to learn about them and learn their ways and learn what is behind the facade that you actually see. So on the surface, it goes both ways. You can have a girl who appears the most submissive, submissive from Submissiveville that has ever been, you know, ever been born, but it doesn't make her automatically submissive. It's an appearance. You have to find out mm. what is behind that. The same as with the dominant. You might get the most dominant dom that's, you know, from Domville that's ever wielded a, a wieldy thing. Um, on the surface, he, you know, it's, uh, it's taking me back to the dressing, you know, dressing as a dominant. You're wearing accoutrements to make yourself appear more dominant. Mm. That's a, that's a discussion for another 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 topic altogether because I'll start growling about that as well. Um, so I do believe it is wrong for people to to hold the, the, their submission up as as the holy grail as you know, as something that is uniquely special and there are terms and conditions you know before you can even talk about it, let alone anything else. Mm -hmm. um, if you see it as an exchange of ideas, see it as an exchange of who you are and what you are, uh, and see it as an exchange of ideas and the, you know, the mental processes that go through creating a successful DS relationship, mm -hmm. then regardless of how precious you may feel your submission is, it will be earned in that process in the same manner that you will earn the domination of the dominant you are talking to. So I don't always growl when I see somebody saying, pontificating about how their submission will be earned. Mm. Um, I have a little grumble maybe. Um, but I am not to judge, I can only guide. And I can only suggest, um, my suggestion would be is you would probably be far more successful in achieving the aim that you have of being an own submissive if you actually approach it in a different way. See yourself and your submission in a different way. Mm -hmm. It would be more successful all around. Yes, we are going to come into contact with people that are not suitable for us. Not every submissive girl I, I talk to would I become involved with. Because we are not compatible in, on different levels, various levels. Um, just because she says she's submissive doesn't automatically mean that I'm going to be interested in her. That's like you don't start a relationship with someone just because you both like Star Wars. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, look upon these things as a long-term process. There is this 
god awful rush in things today. The people are looking for quick fix solutions mm -hmm. to a need that they have suddenly discovered is within them. The, ladies, I'm not having a pop at you, please don't think so, but there have been an awful lot of girls, ladies, women coming in to the lifestyle on the back of romantic, erotic novels, etc, 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 who they suddenly have, oh, I would like to try that. I think I might be submissive, that sounds fun. And then they go wheeling out there and throw their newfound submission out into the public forum and wonder why they attract the sharks. And then after one or two unhappy experiences, they suddenly become bitter and twisted and bemoan the fact that it has all gone horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, take your time, ladies. It is all well and good announcing to the world that you are a submissive, but just be, advi you know, be advised that that is going to bring the predators. Dominance, by their very nature, are predatory. We are predators we are looking for something special we are on the hunt for something special whether you are it remains to be seen the scene that takes time but by our very nature we are predatory it is what makes us who we are so don't be surprised when the predators start to circle and they all want to come and have a little nibble the one that is worthy of A, earning your submission, and B, of you earning their dominance, will make themselves known sooner or later. Just have a little bit of patience. It's all I can ever say to people is be patient with this thing. You know, you jump in at your peril. You may be lucky and get it right first time. It doesn't happen very often. But it does happen. So take your time, be patient, talk. Let them earn your submission while you earn their dominance. Have those exchanges of ideas, of feelings, of thoughts, of emotions, of desires. Work through them. Talk openly. Be candid. Don't be coy. Don't hold things back. It needs to be discussed. Because if you don't discuss it, and then it rears its head in a situation where you may have relinquished control, then it becomes a problem. So, deal with the problems before they become problems. Deal with the issues before they become an issue. Be vocal. Tell them and listen to what they say. You will know instinctively whether there is, you know, um, a connection. There is something there that is worth discussing. There is something there with seeing where it can go. And they will, quite rightly, if they are genuine, wish to earn your submission in as much as you will wish to be owned by them and to earn their dominance. So see it that way. It's a slightly different mind shift. doesn't mean it has any less value. It doesn't mean that it is not worth exactly what it is. It just means that you are offering it in a completely different way. You're saying, look, this is who I am. This is what I've got. This is who I wish to be. Show me. Teach me. Tell me what I need to do. You are the dominant. Show me how to be what I wish to be. And I will follow willingly. It's an exchange, people. It's not a gift. It's an exchange. I think that's as much as I can say on that, Patty. Oh, okay. So it's, it's one of those subjects. That, it's an emotive thing. Mm. Um, there, I know there are going to be women, you know, there's going to be girls screaming at the screen, saying, oh, it's not, it's a gift, it's this, it's that. Great. Great. <laughs> Tell me how long you are on your own. <laughs> Tell me how long you have been waiting to find 
that one who will earn your gift. Because if you beat them over the head with it, which is in effect what some of the girls do, you know, they beat people over the head with the fact that they're going to earn their submission. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find you don't get very far very quickly. Um, treat it as I'm willing to exchange with you, provided you know, we both fit the bill. You will have far more success in being where you need to be and being who you wish to be. That is all I will say on that. Okay. And I didn't growl a great deal. Yeah, that's right. I expected more growling. <laughs> there's, there's no real need. I, I can growl quietly, can't I? Um, and, or growl directly at the person. I know there's going to be some out there that disagree with me. Brilliant. Great. You know, that, that is your very right, and I will fight to the death with your, you know, to protect your right to disagree with me. They are only my thoughts uh, and my feelings. Yes, they're based on a fair amount of experience. Um, as one who's been active in the lifestyle for a long time, but they're still only my thoughts. And they will change over the years, I am sure. They will adapt as I come into contact with more people that will teach me things. Mm. Because we all learn. Every time we interact, we learn. Or we should do. Um, so, everybody I come into contact with, be it dominant, submissive, whatever role they see themselves in, they will teach me something. And hopefully I can impart a little bit of wisdom, such as it is, Patty, um, for them to think about, think, yes, okay, I can see that point of view. So, no growls, not today. <laughs> uh, I think we are done for today. Unless you have anything you want to tell your fans. Tell my fans, yes. Read my books. <laughs> Short and easy. Read. Yes, read the books. Read, read the books. Um, no, I'm only kidding. Well, no, I'm not kidding. Read the books. Um, no, I hope that we can we can get back to discussing various subjects, Patty. We've mm -hmm. we've had a little bit of a break from that. I am sure there are lots of things that people would like to hear discussed. So please, any of you out there. If you have an idea, either contact Patty or myself. Um, and if it's a, a subject that I can talk with, with some knowledge, if I don't know, I will tell you. Honestly, I don't know. Um, and if, if it's an interesting topic or it's something that I feel I should know, then I will research it and I will look into it and I will tell you what I found. Um, but please, put, put topics forward. You know, speak to us, tell us what it is you would like to hear. Um, and we will certainly see if we can, you know, expand your knowledge base and, and give you pointers. And um, even if it's just keeping you safe while you explore in, in your own way, then I will consider it you know, time well spent. And I look forward to talking with you again very soon, Patty. Me too. Um, and we will find something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I shall say bye bye to, for now. And you stay safe and well out there for me. Of course. <laughs> bye, bye bye for now, Patsy. Bye bye. <laughs>